Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya, and this is our season finale of The Real Money Show. Uh, we're going to be running this show this week and next week uh, for programming issues, etc. If you've missed a show at all, we are now on Spotify. Come check us out, as well as YouTube, and you can catch the show whenever you like, listen in the car, listen at home. This is the holiday season, Jer- Jerry, and uh, you mentioned just before we went on that one of the biggest conversations around the table will be the economy, not politics. Keep Could it, be. Keep it light, people. Yeah. Keep it light. <laughs> but um, but certainly the economy can come up. It's probably a little bit more of a neutral territory for family conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think is going to be the the meat of that conversation? Yeah, from what I read with from that article that I you know glanced at today, I didn't really go into it deeply, but because that most Canadians and most Americans have to kind of skim back on spending and really watch the purse strings this year. So when they come together at the at the dinner table, at the breakfast table, uh, they'll be talking about justifying their purchases and justifying why they chose uh, a, a gift like precious metal, something like silver that could have cost you $40 a coin, uh, something that will, you know, perform in the future. So these Getting, getting into more thoughtful gifts as opposed to little, you know, gadgets and things like that. So, you know, just kind of, kind of trying to be mindful of spending and, you know, everyone's feeling the pinch. Everyone's seeing the prices move up over the course of the year. And that's exactly what the theme was this year was rising prices. Inflation was a theme. It's always been a theme since we started back in 2002. It's been our 20th year. It was an amazing year, a fantastic. And I just want to express our gratitude for all of our listeners all of the people that entrusted us with their time and with their money and converting out of paper fiat currencies are being destroyed and into physical precious metals with Guildhall Wealth, your direct precious metals and RSP specialist, whether you purchase to take home or in the RSP, we were here for you in 2022, and we will be here for you in 2023 and beyond. So thank you so much. The number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. Yeah, you know, I think definitely this year in particular, as December hit, and it's, oh my gosh, I got to go and get some gifts that I think inflation it was really felt. You know, th- this time of year is always going to be an expensive time of year you know, lots of gifts and you want to give and maybe you're you're going to do your donations as well, perhaps. And, um, you know, even though you're in the giving spirit, you kind of say, oh, it's a bit tighter this Mm -hmm. year than it's been in the past. And you kind of feel that. Um, But as well, the idea of quality over quantity could certainly be a theme moving forward. And, you know, when we had the everything bubble back in 2018, 19, everyone was looking for you know, instant returns, instant gains. The market has changed significantly over the last few years. And I think that the flight to quality is there. Look, we are in uncertain times. That doesn't mean that we have to be uncertain with how we deal with that. You mentioned inflation, of course, and that has been one of the tenets of why fundamentally why we own physical gold and silver and perhaps even platinum is that they are hedges against inflation. And to that end, you know, again, congratulations to anyone who's been invested in the market. Look at how gold and silver have performed in a year against the the dollar bull. Mm-hmm. You know, 2021 was the year of, oh, inflation's transitory. It doesn't really exist. It's going to go away. And then in 2022, it was, well, We've got a war on this front and we've got to fight it and we're going to try to raise interest rates. Interest rates are still real world negative. They're not at the level of real world inflation. So uh, even if infl- even if rates are at four and they go to 5%, well, if real world inflation's at seven, you're still at a 2% loss. Gold over the last five years is up over 40%. In fact, gold this year Let's just talk about gold for a moment, Jerry, and how we've performed in 2022. We're actually down today as we record the show on the 23rd, but it is positive in every single currency except in the U.S. dollar where it is down a mere 0.7%. That to me is spectacular while while we've been battling against the strength of the U.S. dollar all year. 
the dollar bull has been with us all year as they've been raising rates. Now, if we look at silver's performance over the last year, uh, let me just pull up the chart here. And you should see in some of these currencies, by the way, uh, go to go to goldprice.org and you can see the chart that we, we love. It's called the gold price performance chart. And you can see silver in 2022, now I know it's not over, is positive in every currency, including the US dollar, it's up 2.9%. We might be down today on, on the chart, but we are up on the year in US dollars. In Canadian dollars, we're up 10.9%. We've hit double digits in silver over the last year. Um, if you're looking at a currency like the British pound, it's up over 15%. Mm -hmm. Again, amazing when you think about the fact that we've been battling the dollar bull market all year. It, aren't you, A, are you surprised by this, Jerry, You a little bit? And B, what are your, what's your response when you see these type of numbers? Mm -hmm. Green, across the board. Very, you know, it's double-sided. I'm surprised to a point where, yes, in the midst of a U.S. dollar rally and a bull cycle in the U.S. dollar index, you, you should see precious metals on the downside. It is a headwind against precious metals. It pushes that down because precious metals is negatively correlated. It moves in the opposite direction. But it didn't move, didn't really press on the downside all that much as anticipated, as opposed to other asset classes that got crushed against king dollar. King dollar. And now that we've seen the peak dollar, you know, hitting 113 on the US dollar index, 114 maybe, we're down at 103 today. Um, and as we break the 100 in the dollar index, that's a signal for the, the end of the, bull, the dollar bull cycle. And this is gonna be very positive for precious metals. That's the tailwind for precious metals. And traders are now pricing in peak rate hikes. This is another reason why the US dollar is, is on the downside and many traders are betting that the Fed will pivot, that they will make pause <clears throat> or lighten up on their rate, their, their aggressiveness on their rate hikes. They're, they haven't been aggressive to begin with. I mean, they went with 1%. I think that was the biggest rate hike that we, we could see and we could fathom, but they're down at 50 basis points. They're going down because they, this is unsustainable the Federal Reserve is losing money, the European Central Bank is losing money, the Swiss, the Canadian, all central banks are on the back foot and we're seeing, look at this headline today, the Republican Centers propose an overhaul of the Federal Reserve. So this is massive, this is out on Reuters today and we remember years ago, well, almost a century, uh, over a century ago with the birth of the, the Federal Reserve, it happened over Christmas, it happened over the holidays, while everyone was you know, being merry and being cheered, snuggled in their beds and snuggled in their beds, they rolled out them one of the most insidious plans for our currency. And who knows, we can see a solution with this Federal Reserve and perhaps the big hashtag and the Fed can happen. You know, it, it's remarkable if you think about Edward G. Griffin, who wrote the book, the um, second look at the Federal Reserve, it came from Jekyll Island. He wrote that in the early mid 90s. I think it was 94, maybe 95. We've got a copy of it right here. Right there. On, on our shelf. Beautiful. It really is, uh, you know, economy 101, economics 101, because his whole thing was about the Federal Reserve and, and its purpose and how it works and the cabal that it is. And at that time, when he wrote that book, people didn't know that the Fed was even a private entity. So to think about how far we've come in in the last uh, couple decades to to understand the Fed much better, that I think more people are learning about what the Fed does and are they really on your side. Nonetheless, these are uncertain times and someone's going to have to take the blame for it. And in these uncertain times, equaled with the fact that there's so much derivatives and so much debt that we've become a uh, too big to fail culture since 2008. That set a precedent. Oh, too big to fail. We can't mm -hmm. let anything fail. We're just gonna keep printing money and printing money and something's gonna give. We've talked in the past about Exter's pyramid. It's a pyramid that basically, sh it's an inverted pyramid that basically shows everything is based on the collateral of gold and silver. And then you move up from there through cash, um, through real estate and up into the derivative market and it is going to collapse. Mm -hmm. And we hope it collapses in an orderly fashion 
situation where there's potentially, okay, every, every day goods, your inflation's going to be with us for a long time. Every year, things are going to just be more and more expensive. That's you paying off the debts. That's, that's you and your family paying off the debts. There's no guarantee. But then there's also going to be companies that were zombie companies that we talked about in 2016 and 17 that were paying zero interest but could keep the company afloat. One of those companies is going to go down. Hopefully, there's not a, ch a daisy chain reaction, but certainly there's going to be deficits, just you know, debts going zero, being zeroed out because there's going to be bankruptcies. So there's going to be this combination of inflation and bankruptcies, and these debts are going to get paid off somehow. I still contend you want to get rid of it all, just revalue old to twenty five thousand dollars an ounce, and it's all done for. A mm -hmm. uh, couple, a couple last thoughts. We've got about a, a minute here, Jerry. And just going back to the 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 thought regarding the performance of gold in a bull market with the U.S. dollar bull market, not surprised whatsoever because with with the tail end of this disaster of, of of fiat currencies, trust is lost. The trust out of the system, the trust from the central planners. And many today are considering that central planners, statistics bureaus, where we get the CPI and the media companies to be devious and tr untrustworthy. And when the trust is down the drain, you go there. When there is no guarantee, there is gold. And that's why we have gold supported. Gold moving into 2023 and beyond is going to be fantastic. And you want to be on board, on board the gold train. And you can buy it direct. You can take it home with you. You can have physical gold and silver stored in an IROC approved secure insured vault facility and you can even hold it in your registered account rsp tfsa lira lift riff even resp give us a call the number is 18778 silver the website guildhallwealth.com it's the real money show and we've got a lot more to come here on am640 Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website guildhallwealth.com. Remember, we are your registered account specialists when it comes to owning physical gold and silver. Why is that? Because number one, we helped create this vehicle in the first place and uh, we work with Quest Trade and it's a brilliant vehicle because what it does is it allows you to hold actual physical gold and silver that you own directly in a vault that's outside the banking system but it's all captured within your registered account. You get an inventory report. It's essentially a warehouse receipt showing that this is your product in your sub account. You own it. There's no counterparty risk. There is nothing out there that is not an investment when it comes to registered accounts. There's always going to be some sort of counterparty risk, mm -hmm. except in this case, you have direct ownership of your product. And by the way, you can even go and personally visit your holdings set up the appointment, go and hold that product in your hand. That's right. If you can't hold it, you don't own it. Try doing that with an ETF. Try doing that with a gold-backed fund. Try doing that with a certificate. You cannot. That is the acid test. What, what we have at Guildhall is a vehicle of physical ownership. Now, that's not cheap is it jerry it's not going to be the cheapest route the most economical route to getting involved in the precious metal market not at all i mean this is wealth insurance number one and you know in light of the recent dealings with ftx there there is a quote that came across the desk kevin o'leary who is the big proponent of ftx and and who advertised and even you know had people purchase ftx shares he said this years ago, I like gold because it is a stabilizer, it is an insurance policy. And that's what gold is. It's an insurance policy. And what is wealth insurance? It's zero counterparty risk and eliminating all the counterparties away from your money. Because it has a millennial record as a store of value. It's the most widely recognized and universally accepted valuable in the world. And why do central banks hold it? They hold it primarily for global liquidity and independence from all conventional arrangements, whether it be currencies, financial institutions, banks. Look at Fort Knox. Look at the U.S. They hold a massive 8,000 tons, never been audited, of course. Ask Ron Paul. It's never been audited, but they have 8,000 tons reported. Where do they hold it? Not in a bank. They hold it at West Point Depository and Fort Knox Depository, similar to Guildhall, without the military, of course. But this is it. It's a reserve. And the reserve, your gold and silver is a monetary reserve which must be fully decorrelated from the conventional arrangements that could potentially fail. These are financials, these are paper, these are derivatives, ETFs, 
When people lose trust, they want to take physical delivery, and this is why it's so important to get physical precious metals in your RSP or Lira, because it's away from the banking system. And central banks have definitely been on a tear this year, sp uh, specifically on getting involved in physical precious metals. And we've seen perhaps an aspect of that uh, connecting of the dots because we've seen a drawdown in inventories on the COMEX. So while the paper price just kind of sits there, we've had an, a massive drawdown in inventories and we can see that central banks have been buying. And yes, of course, you can get involved in this in a, in a more economical way, but there's, you're going to be adding counterparty risk. That's the whole point. You want to do an ETF? There's no fees. There's a trade fee. That's it. Do you own anything? No, of course, absolutely not. If you decided you wanted to take de take delivery of some product, good luck. You know, we've seen gold backed funds um, even fold. Mm -hmm. People start asking for delivery. They go, nah, no redemptions. In fact, we're going to close the fund down. That cannot happen if you own your own physical product. It just cannot happen. You own it. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're paying for the for the premium, the retail fabricated side of the product. You know, premiums have come down a little bit in the last couple of weeks. But, you know, look, you might be paying three, four dollars over spot for silver. You might be paying anywhere from a hundred to a hundred and twenty dollars over spot for gold, maybe even lower if you're buying kilo bars. But that's your product. That's you the price own you it. Pay for insurance. And you're buying actual money. You're buying something that's been taken out of the ground, purchased by a refiner, refined, uh, fabricated into a product packaged potentially, shipped to a wholesaler, wholesaler uses logistics and gets it to the retailer and then you're buying it. So understand that this is a product, it's money, it's not an investment. Big, big difference. By the way, you mentioned FTX. Um, he is, uh, uh, Sam Bankman fried has been, been extradited or about to be extradited. Did you see where he's gonna be extradited to? Nowhere. Um, he's gonna be put in the same prison that, that uh, Jeffrey Epstein was put in. <laughs> So um, Where the cameras shut off. Hopefully they've fixed the cameras at this point, and hopefully they've given the security raises and that uh, everybody's uh, not sleep deprived no. uh, as far as security guards. And they're well fed so that everyone's actually on guard. <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I, see you know, who advice. knows? Who knows? But, but uh, you know, the, the crypto, um, at the end of the day, it's given a lot of people a lot of pause. You know, they, they talk a little bit about the fact that the infrastructure keeps growing, but I wonder what's there. You know, the, the beauty of crypto is that it, it really has no value. It's got no innate value. And the, the crypto, um, I, I'm not saying you can't make money at it, okay? W do whatever you want, okay? But you're, you're, you're listening to a gold guy who's going to tell you from a gold guy's perspective what you're what i see in cryptocurrencies which is that there is no value except what you give it well that's great we can all say the sky is purple mm -hmm. and for a while we might all believe it but it's blue and the truth is it's blue gold has an innate value meaning it's been around for thousands of years you cannot destroy it it does not erode you know dripping water on it won't kill it putting it in fire won't kill it Nothing is going to destroy it. Even if you blew it up in a, in a bomb, it'll be there. It'll be there. You'll mine it soon enough and turn it back into, its, into, uh, into something. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's been money for thousands of years, not just because it's a different color, but because it's essentially indestructible mm -hmm. and it's malleable, right? And you can change it into different, you know, divide it into different things. So that's innate value, not it doesn't have value because we just gave it value. Right. It has a proven value because it has an innate value. It is useful for things, and that's what gives it that innate value. Jerry, 100%. I know you're a gold guy, but agree or disagree? I'm a gold guy. I have some crypto. I'm not one to th you know, throw the dice with my wealth. You can throw the dice and make money. Crypto for me is just that. It's a lottery ticket. But when I want to insure that famous quote that says, I'm more concerned about the return of my money than the return on my money. I'm going for the gold. And it depends, like cryptocurrency relies so, so heavily upon usages and who is adopting it. There are thousands of cryptocurrencies out there. Yeah, there are a few strong ones and there could be strong ones that will you know, continue to survive and thrive perhaps. But what, what I saw 
you know, when in 2009, when Europeans were locked out of their bank account, that's when the advent of crypto, when Bitcoin came about, when these oligarchs got their money out of the country using a Bitcoin. And then the legend of Satoshi Yakamoto. I don't know who that guy is. It's like Shakespeare. If you can't explain to me where this thing came from, when I can go back into biblical times, and I mean, there's another quote here from, from Nick that appreciates this quote. Uh, Mr. T once said, gold was a gift to Jesus. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. And you know, this, this speaks history. This is, goes, goes back thousands of years of value. Yeah, it's been money for thousands of years. But if we, as we advance in, in technology, we're noticing that gold is also used in aerospace technology. And even this one. That, yeah, there's uh, a new technology you brought, you brought to the table this, this week. This is amazing. I mean, for guys that wear glasses, guys and gals that wear glasses. You, get on, the, you get on the bus on a cold day. <laughs> You start walking to the back, and your 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 eyeglasses are fogging up like crazy. Yeah, where are your eyes? I can't see your eyes. You got to take it off, and then you got to wipe it down. It's just so embarrassing, and it's even dangerous for people who are on the construction sites who are going in and out of sites, and you need your vision, right? But this is a solution. Uh, these developers came up with ultra thin, a gold based transparent coating. So putting the gold molecules into glass lenses, Jeremy, and what it does, the gold will transform the light into heat which will then eliminate the fogging, eliminate the evaporation. I told this to my son. He's 10 years old. He just got his glasses, and he's like, Dad, that's amazing. He just got the glasses, I, but he realized how annoying the fogging was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they'll put that into windshields eventually in cars. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. You know what else uh, they use metals for, Jerry? Uh, they use silver for transition lenses. You know, the lenses when you go from outside and they're dark to inside and they're, they're light, right. those are made because of silver. And that's, you know, and, and talking about silver, silver is such, this is what makes it very exciting to know that silver has the monetary attributes. You translate the word silver in 14 different languages, it means money. So it has that, that, uh, that, that side to it, but it also has these amazing applications in industry. But it's uh, the above ground ounces that, you know, it's a lot less in the market, a lot, silver, a lot less silver ounces above ground globally. So this is what's making it exciting. When you have a drain in demand for the industries, plus us who need the gold for our portfolios, it's a very exciting time to be in silver. Yeah, you know, look, um, silver is used in uh, all green applications, whether it's in batteries, it's in solar power. If you've ever heard of the term a silver spoon in your mouth, born with a silver spoon in your mouth, it's because silver naturally absorbs bacteria. And so if you were wealthy, you had uh, your mom stick a silver spoon in your mouth, or maybe it was your, your nanny, and uh, stick a silver spoon in your mouth and it would absorb bacteria and that would help keep you more healthy. So now you see this, this uh, complete um, cornucopia of, of usages, uh, medical usages, for, in, for instance, they use it in, in uh, bandages for burn victims. Um, they use it in all sorts of things like, yeah, band-aids. You could see it in all sorts of things like we've seen it in washing machines. Yes. We've seen it in athletic clothing, be again, because it absorbs bacteria. Well, what makes your clothes smell in your gym bag? Hmm. Bacteria. And so, and that was a military application. They used it in the underwear because they don't take off their underwear for a while, mm -hmm. uh, for a few days. And um, so all these different applications, um, and again, you know, if you think about this, if they if they can attempt to go green, the the demand on the metal itself is so extreme. You can look at it from our perspective, from a gold gold silver perspective. You say there it, there is no way it gets accomplished. Mm -hmm. there, there's just not enough silver to accomplish the goals of all of the solar power or wind power that would be required, or how much silver would go into electric cars. And even if the technology improves and you need less of it, it's just, it can't be done. Right. And then what are you gonna do? You're gonna go and mine it? So if they, if they feel that possessed enough to keep trying to move forward with this type of stuff that at the end of the day, carbon mm -hmm. is the enemy. <laughs> is the enemy. What a joke. Um, <laughs> that, that hey, it's only going to be great for silver. So I think it's kind of silver, uh, tails you win, heads you win. Right. There's no losing in this market. And you, you put those fundamentals together. You have inflation, 
right? That means what? Money's being printed. How do you protect against all this money being printed? You have to have an a, a finite asset like gold and silver, and it's it's time tested. Then you have supply and demand. Well, there can be if you're going to use it for more and more industry, more and more investment, then you've got too much demand, not enough supply. If you have to go and mine it, especially during an inflationary cycle or because the demand is too, too high, well, then the prices on the mining is only going to keep going up. So heads I win, tails I win. Silver is a great place to go. If you're interested in that, you can call us, one eight seven seven eight silver You can go to the website, guildhallpreciousmetals.com, and pick up your first 10-ounce bar of silver, your first tube of silver maples. If you feel really ambitious, you might want to get a 100-ounce bar of silver and it's all LBMA approved. They're all the globally recognized brands. They all meet the same quality criteria. And you can even hold it in an RSP or TFSA. Again, your own sub account, your own product. You get the serial numbers. And the number is 18778Silver. The website is guildhallwealth.com. This is The Real Money Show. More to come on AM640. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number 18778Silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. We've been impressed this year of how gold and silver have performed under r rising interest rates, a dollar bull market in the U.S. dollar, which you know can't continue in perpetuity. And another, I know we've been talking a lot, Jerry, about inflation, inflation, and you know our uh, our audience probably either has a drinking game every time we bring it up, or the the minute we bring it up, it's like lights out; they start to fall asleep because oh, they're talking about inflation again. But there's also stagflation, and uh, you brought a you brought a chart here talking about how the precious metals have performed in the '70s when there was stagflation. Can you tell us a little bit about stagflation? Is that something that we could possibly be seeing going forward? And what kind of returns have we seen in the metals from the '70s till today? Before we get into how excited we are for 2023. And what kind of gains could be had if you own physical gold and physical silver? Well, certainly this is this has been the trend. We have, we have multi trends here at Guildhall. We talk about de dollarization, the brick movements, moving away from the SWIFT system, seeing the, the developments out of the brick system, moving with a gold petro dollar or gold and petro uh, petro gold rather. So it's all these developing things that we have to be cognizant of and the major trend going into 2023 is stagflation. And here is a chart that was presented by the consultants that we get some information from Switzerland. Um, and stagflation, what stagflation is, is high inflation with the, as a result of, you know, money printing and currency uh, creation, uh, it coupled in with low growth because as a result of all of your costs rising, the stocks and the companies that represent your portfolio, their their bottom line is getting hit. Their wages aren't going up, but their bottom line, the cost to import, the cost to uh, ship is gone up 40% because of fuel. It, can, it continues to get worse and worse. And if we look at this chart that came came across our desk from Safe Wealth out of, out of Switzerland, they report some tremendous charts, including this. This is a multi-currency percentage increase from the bear market lows in gold from January 1970. And this is the loss period. The, the 1970s to 80s was stagflationary. What did gold do during this time between the U.S. dollar? Well, the U.S. dollar went up, or the gold price went up in U.S. dollar terms 4,800% in Australian dollars, which is very closely linked to the Canadian dollar, 8,000%. A Canadian dollar, seven thousand percent. So gold is just continuing to move it, up is versus that, these these currencies that are being decimated and destroyed because of inflation. Is that how much gold went up during the seventies, or yes. from seventy to today? It's from seventy to today. Okay, so from nineteen seventy to today, gold has gone up how much in Canadian currency? Uh, over six thousand percent. And th this is the beginning where all, all reports are coming across the desks from Capital.com, CNBC, um, Bloomberg. Everybody's talking about stagflation. And, and if you're not hearing about it from your financial planner, you need to get in touch with us because you need to do something about what stagflation can do to a stock-filled portfolio. And this is coming from Capital.com. Headline is Gold Price 2023 outlook will stagflation push bullion to a fresh to fresh all-time highs they say yes 
since stagflation is going to worsen with a global recession and stickier than predicted inflation, but central banks holding back further monetary tightening, gold's price might rise exponentially as investors flee bonds, equities, and currencies all at once, as it happened in the 70s. In this situation, gold would be seen as the only asset in town, quote unquote, and may be on track to sur surpass the all time high of $2,075 per ounce. I, I don't want to derail you on this, but it, it kind of has me thinking a little bit about where we are in the price, Jerry, that, you know, silver at $23, $24 is somehow, in, to me, psychologically, like what I see out there is not as interesting as when it was trading at $18. When it's trading sub $20, it feels like a deal and people's ears are perked up and they're, they're, they're watching it and they're excited. Oh, I know I'm getting a deal. I absolutely know I'm getting a deal, even if the premiums are high. Now, once silver gets into the $28 range, you start to think, okay, it, it's, it can get to 30. And if it breaks 30, we're in a whole new bull market. Yeah. Same thing in gold, gold, gold sub 1750 let's say seven in the low 1700s or even just below that it's pretty exciting mm -hmm. so oh we're, we're in bargain territory but gold at just over 1800 doesn't feel as interesting because we've seen it as high as 20 as, as high as 2000 so it, gold at 1885 1910 starts to become a lot more interesting so in my mind i'm 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 listening to you talking about this and I'm thinking this all kind of dovetails together when all of these things start to coalesce and at the same time the price of silver has moved up to 2750 or 28 or 29 and all of a sudden there's a massive rush in and that could be what puts you over the $30 mm -hmm. mark. Oh yeah. The participation is going to be huge coupled in with the fact that the 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 exchanges that are pricing are spot prices are running out of metal. India imported eight, you know, how many thousand tons of silver over the course of the year? It's an all time high. Um, and there was a rush for a phys for the physical bullion um, more than ever before. And we could see coming out of uh, Australia, and I like watching what Australia does, because just like Canada's um, Commonwealth economy and, a, and a, a commodity driven currency economy, we watch what Australia does and they have a sovereign wealth fund a sovereign wealth fund that is now extremely bullish on gold um, they, they, they cite the persistent risk of inflation and fracturing of the geopolitical order bigger government and more extreme forms of monetary policy um, they're seeing the same exact conditions that reflect the treacherous 1970s another stagflation our great focus on increased liquidity and more dynamic approach to asset allocation. There is no simple answers, they said, from an investment community. The traditional approaches, the conventional, which once worked, have that have delivered strongly, it's doubtful they are fit for purpose in the future. So we, they're making a shift and they're moving towards gold. However, as we go into the paperwork, they're going moving into ETFs. ETFs is not the right play. As, quote, Rick Santelli from CNBC mentioned, if you're in paper, the notion of many who trade gold, if the financial world comes to an end, they're going to have the gold. If you're playing in ETFs, electronically traded funds, paper, you're going to have a piece of paper. That comes from Rick Santelli. Great advice from Rick Santelli from CNBC. Yeah, it's this case of, well, we want to move to these things because there's uncertainty and we want, we want sort of our own sovereignty and our own ability to have you know, be in control of what we need and our money. But then I go ahead and make a mistake of buying an ETF where I'm not in control of my money. It's kind of you're still taking this investment mindset, this equity mindset. And even though you're trying to get into the gold market, it's like a classic first time mistake. Yes. So what are you going to do? I, I, I like the I like the point. Maybe they'll figure it out as as they go. They need to see um, the trends. There's a, there's a bleed out of ETFs. That's a massive trend. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on AM640. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. Jerry, when we are looking at the changes in the economy and the uncertainty in the economy, and we see that in uh, 2000, 
18, 19, there was really the everything bubble and assets don't really perform during an everything bubble. You moved into what, what let's call it the COVID period where everything was shut down. And again, things, I, I think people perked up to what was happening in the precious metals market and they started to say, okay, well, they're going to create all this money uh, or currency out of thin air. There's going to be consequences to this. We're certainly paying the consequences for this and all of the previous actions before that. We said going back to 2008, I mean, we're, we're in a, a too big to fail economy. And um, however, now assets are, per assets are, are starting to perform again. And there's going to be a, move, a, a stronger movement towards assets because people don't want the, the investment side of, well, where's my money? H right. How do I know it's going to perform? And there's a movement back towards assets. And one of those assets are natural fancy colored diamonds. Specifically, look, pink diamonds, the Argyle mine closed. That's it. There's no more, there's no more primary market for pink, uh, primary source for pink diamonds. Because they, the Argyle mine produced 90% of the world's pinks. So that's it. We're now on to a secondary market. They've started to perform really well at auction. Not just pinks, but yellows. All colored diamonds are starting to, to perform really well at auction. And we're seeing that the, the great thing about natural fancy colored diamonds is that it's real estate in your pocket. It's, um, it, it's wealth that's outside the system. And uh, it's easily passed between family members. You can travel with it. Uh, there's no paperwork. If you wanted to own real estate, is this the market you want to own real estate in? Or would it be easier just to sit on an asset? A couple of thoughts from you for, for natural fancy color diamonds, Jerry? We, also, we always note that as financial, as physical tangible assets, natural fancy color diamonds are, are both desirable because they can be stored outside of the financial system. And it's also attractive to risk-conscious investors who value the ability to actually store assets discreetly and privately, something that is becoming ever more important in this day and age. And they have a, also an ability to generate long-term returns, something that the mindset has to be gauged to war back to generational wealth and moving away from a quick flip. Gone are those days where you can roll the dice. Yes, you can roll the dice and maybe get, get rich quick, but this is not the strategy. The strategy is to acquire assets that stood the test of time that the wealthy have acquired for thousands of years. And the gains show it. When you have something rare, specifically like a pink diamond or a vivid yellow, you have factors that are relevant in the current investment climate with rarity being the number one factor. You cannot print gold and silver. You cannot print a natural fancy color diamond. And with the very source of all the pink diamonds closing down. The very mind that was responsible is still in the game. They're advancing the Argyle branding even more. And if we look at how they have performed over the course of the last few months, Fancy Pink's up about 26%, Fancy Intense about 20%, and Fancy Vivid of about 15%. And these are from, and the tier of collectability. Uh, the, the, the future for natural fancy color diamonds Based on this, on this, um, on this report, Jeremy, there's a huge future in this market, and I'm very excited to be able to offer this to my clients who are very risk averse at this moment in time. And what we do at Guildhall is we acquire the diamonds. We've gone out and searched for the diamonds, <clears throat> bought it on very specific criteria. We're looking at the highest grade um, in terms of clarity. We're looking at the strongest colors. We want diamonds of a certain size that's going to give that performance. You know, Jerry, every, you know, every few weeks we get a phone call from someone who bought a brownish pink diamond that's, you know, uh, not internally flawless or not even VS quality. It's an SI and they overpaid and that's the problem in the market. You, you, you know, who do you trust in the market? We've gone out, we paid for the diamonds, we invested in those diamonds first, they became part of the Guildhall collection, and then we opened that collection to the public. So if you want to learn more about that, give us a call. We're happy to continue to teach you about this market because it is something that you're going to want to look at in, again, these uncertain times where you want the certainty of hard assets and you want hard assets that perform. Jerry, I have this headline here. 
Gold at $4,000. Analysts share their 2023 outlook as inflation and recession fears linger. Uh, this comes from uh, Jörg Kiner, Managing Director and CIO of Swiss Asia Capital. And he said that investors would look to gold with inflation remaining high in many parts of the world. 4000 is that is that the peak of gold or can we go higher than that maybe not in 2023 but let's say over the next 5 6 years we'll have a chart here from the same uh, safe wealth management uh, their probable direction based on the trend phase of the 54 year cycle now this is massive technical charts if you are a chartist if you're into technicals you got to get this report i can email this to you if you'd like to get in touch with me at guildhall um, according to this pattern gold has a peak in well 2027ish uh, they have gold potentially, if everything plays out with stagflation, uh, considering the de-dollarization um, and, and lack of growth and participation in the gold market. 4000 is is very conservative, Jeremy. This chart has gold heading into the $20,000 range and silver to gold ratio heading back to a 10 to 1. If we have a $20,000 gold price and a 10 to 1 silver to gold ratio, that is going to be the one of the most massive... Uh, wealth building, wealth transfers in history. Silver price at $2,000. This is exactly why I want millennials. If you are think you're priced out of the market from buying a home, you are not. If you can acquire yourself 1,500 ounces of silver and get that today, you can buy a home. The dream is not over. And I think that for people who have acquired gold and silver over the last year, you're very lucky. You know, maybe you haven't quite overcome the cost of doing business yet. But that's going to happen. But you have your ticket. It's going to be increasingly difficult to acquire precious metals as the price rises. Yeah, sure, some people might sell as the price goes up. But there's going to be more and more buyers, and it's just going to get more difficult. And that's going to amplify the move to the upside. So congratulations to those who have it. Uh, as much as you can, try to hold on to your precious metals and hold on to your hats. It's going to be amazing. So congratulations to everyone who's been acquiring precious metals over the last few years. Uh, we, we truly believe you're going to be rewarded handsomely for that. And if you've never invested before, start small. Give us a call. The number is one silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. Uh, hope everyone's been enjoying their holiday season and we cannot wait for 2023 because we think that it's going to be just a stellar year for precious metals, even in a, in, a, in a time of uncertainty. Jerry, thank you so much for joining and we look forward to speaking to everyone again in 2023 on The Real Money Show here on AM640.